DKR's car vehicle is a beginner favorite. It controls a lot like other classic racing games of the time, and it holds the most default vehicle spots in the game, with over half the game's tracks being played in the car. It's the easiest vehicle to learn, but it's by far the hardest to truly master. So, where do you begin? There are six beginner mechanics that every new runner needs to learn how to do in order to go fast. Let's start with what is by far the most well-known exploit in the game, A-tapping. Anybody, literally someone who has never played the game before, can pick up a controller and begin rhythmically tapping the A button. Doing this will make you drive faster than just holding A down. This is because the first frame of the A press applies a burst of acceleration to the vehicle. Done in rapid succession, we begin to constantly apply a boost to all normal driving. You can even hear the rate at which any player is doing this in the gameplay audio. Keep in mind though, A-tapping only works during normal driving. If you are off-road, that is, driving in the grass, sand, or water, A-tapping is often slower. In these cases, it's better to just hold A down until you get back on the road. Drifting, referred to officially as power sliding, is also very simple to do. Just hold down the R button while turning and you'll see red skid marks come off of your wheels. You'll also hear a tire squealing noise. Drifting is always faster during normal driving, and should be used in conjunction with A-tapping as often as needed. Drifting will also give you lots of control over the vehicle. While in a drift, you can push the joystick more deeply into the turn to create a sharper turn. You can also push the joystick away from the turn to create a wider drift. Holding this away drift for too long will cause you to spin out. This can be avoided by pushing the joystick back into the turn. At the very least, the joystick position needs to return to neutral to avoid the spin out. Drifting is also the best way to climb up steep hills. It's so good at climbing hills, in fact, there are multiple places in the game where drifting uphill will almost launch you over it. This is used a lot in time trials, but has many uses in full game speedruns as well. It's possible to perform extremely tight, S-shaped maneuvers with a technique called drift switching. Mastering this technique will allow you to adjust the trajectory of the car in sharp intervals, avoiding the need for wide, complicated turns where you need to slow down. To switch drift quickly on the fly, release the R button entirely for a short amount of time. During this window of time, push the joystick in the opposite direction. Then, re-grab the R button fully. Done in quick succession, you can quickly switch the direction of your drift to avoid obstacles, dodge other racers, and master those tricky S-bend sections. This can be a very difficult mechanic to learn, but can be made easier by performing the action in one fell swoop. Forget about A-tapping for a moment, and just include the A-tap in your drift switch movement. Once you've mastered A-tapping and drifting, congratulations, you're on your way to becoming a car expert. But there's lots of times during DKR gameplay 
where you don't want to be A-tapping or drifting at all. Let's talk about boosting. Green boosts are very easy to get, and are the fastest type of boost in the game. When driving over a zipper, simply let go of the A button. Green flames will burst from the back of your vehicle, and just before the boost ends completely, you'll get rainbow smoke leaving your exhaust pipes. This can also be done with all levels of blue balloons. It's recommended to get green boosts as often as possible, since they last longer than a normal boost. It's very important to keep your finger off the A button during a boost. Start pressing A again too soon, and you'll kill the boost entirely. Drifting will kill the boost as well, so as soon as you hit a zipper or use a boost, make sure you aren't using any other inputs other than the joystick. Green boosts last much longer than they might appear to. Once you see the rainbow smoke come out, that's a cue to begin A-tapping again. But A-tapping at this point in time should actually be done slightly differently. When finishing a green boost from a zipper or a blue balloon, you don't just want to resume A-tapping at maximum speed. Some of the speed gained from the green boost can actually be preserved for a short period of time by lightly tapping A at a slower pace than normal A-tap driving. Your A-taps here should be extremely light and quick. You don't want to be pressing A for longer than just one frame, or you'll lose speed. This technique takes a while to master, but eventually you'll find yourself automatically doing it after each boost. This tech becomes incredibly powerful when trying to connect two zippers together. You can preserve the speed from one zipper to the next simply by feathering your A-taps. Some tracks barely ever get to use full rhythm A-taps. There's just tons of feathering from zipper to zipper. Enough about the A button, let's talk a bit about the B button. Like many racing games, the B button is DKR's break. In speedrunning, however, we actually often use the B button for turning more sharply. A single tap of the B button in the middle of a boost is enough to change your trajectory drastically. It's like, hell yeah, brother. Oh, look at this canyonless bam! B tap! but we can do this even more tightly by including the R button in the B button press. This technique is used in almost every single track of the game and will allow you to control TT more tightly. The B button is otherwise used to back up. If you hold B and down on the joystick, you will start to drive backwards. You can steer with down left and down right as well, When used in conjunction with the R button, steering with either down left or down right and reversing the vehicle will cause you to do a very sharp backwards U-turn. The amount in which you turn depends on your inputs and can be kind of hard to control. In general though, the B button is a turning tool, not a brake. If you ever need to slow down a bit, it's better just to hold down the A button to keep control of the car. One of the most interesting things about the car is that you can actually control your pitch while airborne, just like the plane. By pushing up on the joystick, you will push the car down towards the ground. If you push down on the joystick, you will pull the car up into the air. Both these techniques are useful in different situations. When airborne and moving at high speeds, pushing down on the joystick can extend the distance traveled a short amount. However, it may be that you want to land more quickly so that you can start turning sooner. In this case, pushing up on the joystick will ground your vehicle quicker 
and give you the space you need to make the turn. This is a technique that requires some finesse to master, as just holding straight up or down on the joystick will oftentimes have some undesired effects. It's better in this case to simply feather the up or down input you want to have. Pitch control is even more powerful when your vehicle is flying through the air at an angle. Holding up or down in this case will let the car curve through the air and will give you considerable control over where the vehicle lands. Keep in mind though that pitch control can result in undesired speed loss. Pushing down on the stick to stay airborne longer will frequently slow you down, so there's a happy medium to be found in every scenario. DKR's car is extremely fun to play once you have mastered these techniques. TT the Clock is capable of really fun and crazy movement, and the game only gets more fun as you get better at understanding this tech. That said, it takes a lot of practice to get a feel for the car in its entirety. DKR is not about memorizing inputs and performing them in the perfect order. It's about allowing the controller to become almost an extension of your body. You need to develop a feeling for the game, a sense for what will happen, when it will happen, and why. Only then will all these techniques really start to come together. It's important to mention as well that there are many, many other mechanics at play here that have enormous effects on gameplay. Only a select few runners have really learned how to apply those mechanics, and the results speak for themselves. But learn these ones first. They're the foundation of the game, and will serve you well in almost every single situation. Before this video ends, we'll take a look at one of the most tech-heavy tracks in the game, Greenwood Village. On screen, you'll see each piece of tech talked about in this video. Each tech will flash on and off based on which of them is being performed in the gameplay. If you'd like, you can use YouTube's playback settings to watch this portion back at a slower speed. Check the description below for updates on this tutorial. You can also find more reference materials for this video, as well as links to dkr64.com and the Discord. Thanks for watching.